for a motion to adopt. Jason, all in favor? Carried. Adoption of minutes from January 15, 2019. It's just one thing I saw on page five, Diane. Okay. Um, under resolution 1901-08 for SD 2018-22, it doesn't state if it was carried or not. Oh, okay. Thanks. As amended. Perfect. All in favor? It's carried. We'll move on to development permit application file number DP 2018-99, a variance request for an existing pump house to the side yard property line. Whenever you're ready, Suzanne. All right, good morning. Good this morning. is Southwest 12 24 And the recommendation from staff is that MPC choose option one to approve this development permit with a variance for the pump house to be 0.59 feet from the side yard setback and it is subject to conditions in Appendix A of the development permit report, which I will highlight for you. <clears throat> So this is located two miles east of the county office. It's a 46.8 acre parcel, just zoned to industrial general. The applicant submitted a real property report for compliance and during the review of the RPR, it was determined that the pump house doesn't meet the side yard setback. It's an eight by 10 structure and houses the existing irrigation pump from the WID canal. So the land use bylaw states the minimum side yard setback is 10 feet and the RPR indicates the pump house is 0.59 feet from the property line. So MPC is the development authority for decisions on discretionary uses greater than 10%. This application is not located within the CMRB plan area. Um, land use bylaw, it does not meet the requirements of the bylaw because of the um, side yard setback. Therefore, the variance has been requested. Um, variance is requested to accommodate the pump house. It's already been constructed. It's been there for many years from what I understand. And um, the WID who have the property line adjacent where they have a canal says further to the above noted, WID confirms that the landowner has permission to keep the shed in the current location. When the shed is rebuilt in the future, it must abide by our setbacks of 30 meters. So the options, three options proposed by staff to approve DP 2018-099, a variance for the pump house to be 0.59 feet from the side yard setback and is subject to conditions noted in Appendix A of the development permit report based on the following that the requested variance fits the criteria for the development authority to grant a variance to the regulations of the land use bylaw. Option two is to refuse the application with reasons given and option three is to provide an alternative recommendation of MPC's choosing. As I mentioned, staff are recommending option one to approve the development permit with the variance because the proposed application aligns with the prescribed uses of the industrial general district as per the LUB and allowing the pump house to remain in the proposed location does not unduly interfere with the amenities of the neighborhood or affect the use enjoyment or value of the neighboring parcels of land. So the conditions proposed are this development permit is issued solely for the purpose of a pump house defined as an accessory building structure. Variance has been granted allowing the pump house to be set back 0.18 meters or 0.59 feet from the side yard adjacent to the WID canal. Development shall proceed according to IG requirements. No permanent development, honor over any utility right of easement and applicant to ensure approach is developed to county standards. So there is a location map east of the uh, town of Strathmore and the county offices. <clears throat> and there's an aerial photo right along the canal there. That was the RPR showing that it was 0.59 feet away or 0.59 meters. 59 feet. And that's what it looks like. It's been there for some time. And that's everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions from MPC?
I'll move that MPC approve development permit 2018-099, a variance for the pump house to be 0 0.18 meters from the side yard setback, as subject to the conditions noted in Appendix A of the development permit report. Okay, thank you very much. Any discussion? Motion on the floor, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, we'll move on to file number DP 2019-004, a garden suite with variance request. When you're ready. So this is located southeast 26, 2325, and this request is to present a garden suite application for a residence which was constructed within a barn with variances required for the maximum distance from the primary dwelling to the garden suite and to the maximum square footage provision with the land location approximately 4.83 kilometers south of Strathmore. Staff are recommending that MPC choose option one to approve this application and subject to conditions in Appendix A of the development permit report that I will review right now. <clears throat> so a new primary residence is being constructed on the parcel and it received a development permit in 2018. There is also an existing manufactured dwelling on the property which is going to be removed once the landowners occupy the primary dwelling. During the building permit process for the new residence, staff became aware that a suite also existed within the upper levels of the barn. This would be the third dwelling on the property until the manufactured dwelling is removed. The landowner was unaware that permits had not been issued previously for the suite and this application has been made to ensure that all applicable permits have been obtained. The suite will share a water well with the new primary dwelling but will remain on a separate private sewage system. Land use bylaw states that outside Hamlet the maximum floor area of a garden suite is 1200 square feet and this suite is 2175 square feet in size so that requires a variance to the maximum. The dwelling is located 180 feet from the primary residence and the land use bylaw states that it should be a maximum of 40 feet from the primary residence. A dwelling garden suite is a discretionary use and also variance is greater than 10% need to go to Municipal Planning Commission for approval. So this, locate, this application is within the CMRB area but it does not meet the criteria for necessitating a review. It's also located within the Eagle Lake ASP area and in the general agriculture policy area which specifies servicing shall be in compliance with the municipal development plan and the land use bylaw so it does meet those stipulations. It aligns with the MDP section 3.6.1 which says that residential development should be planned for the long term and min minimize cumulative impacts as well as ensuring residents have access to a range of affordable housing types and a diversity of housing choices to accommodate all stages of life. In the land use bylaws section for Ag General, a dwelling garden suite is a discretionary use. And in the garden suite section of the bylaw, it meets the requirements with the exception, as I mentioned, of the maximum floor area and the 40 foot setback to the primary residence. So with regards to the variance, it meets the criteria by which the development authority can decide if it will approve a variance. It un doesn't unduly interfere with the amenities of the neighborhood or materially interfere with affect the use, enjoyment or value of neighboring parcels of land. So this variance is requested in order to accommodate the garden suite because the suite is 2175 and has already been constructed in a building which is 180 feet from the primary residence. And just a note, on January 8th, Council gave first reading to a land use bylaw amendment to the garden suite section. The proposed changes include two clauses highlighted above to be removed or amended and if the amendment is adopted, these two variance requests would not be required in the future. We did circulate to internal staff, um, to adjacent neighbors where we had one response with concerns. 
internal file review. Um, the deputy fire chief just wanted to ensure that they install smoke detectors and CO detectors in the living space and recommends that a smoke detector be in the bedroom as well as one in the main area and they should be wired together ideally. So the one response with concerns, does MPC want me to read that or have you had a chance to review it? It was in the package. I think we've already reviewed it. Yeah. yeah. You're good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So staff are proposing three options. Option one, that MPC approve this development permit for the garden suite with the two variances, which would allow the garden suite to remain in the existing building located 180 feet from the primary residence and have a square footage of 2175 square feet subject con to conditions noted in Appendix A of the development permit report based on the following. That the requested variances fit the criteria for the development authority to grant a variance with the exception of the aforementioned variances with the stated conditions of approval, the development authority has determined that the proposed garden suite complies with the land use bylaw rules and regulations. Option two is to refuse the application with reasons and option three is to provide an alternative recommendation of MPC's choosing. It's the recommendation as I mentioned of staff that the garden suite be approved with the two variances because the proposed application aligns with the MDP, it aligns with the prescribed uses of Ag General District, the existing uses and proposed suite fit within the context of the area which is primarily residential and agricultural and allowing the garden suite to remain in the proposed location does not unduly interfere with the amenities of the neighborhood or, with, or affect the use, enjoyment or value of neighboring parcels of land. So the proposed conditions are the development permit is issued solely for the purpose of allowing a residential suite to remain within an existing barn defined as a dwelling garden suite. A variance has been granted allowing the garden suite to remain in the location 180 feet from the primary residence and have a square footage of 2175 square feet. Development shall proceed according to AG requirements, no permanent development on or over any utility right of way or easement, an applicant to ensure approach is developed to county standards. We do have a few notes. All construction shall conform to Alberta Safety Code regulations, which would be the next step um, that it, we ensure it has safety code, met safety code requirements. Applicant to ensure installation of smoke detectors and CR2, CO2 detect, CO detector, and development shall meet all provincial and federal legislation. So there is the location map south of Strathmore, east of the 817. And there's the site plan. So there's the new residence under construction. Here's the dwelling that's going to be removed. Here's the proposed garden suite. That's the Eagle Lake ASP. So it's located here within the ASP area. The MRB, it's within there. This was the circulation area. This is another aerial photo. and just some photos of the barn with the suite in it. And there's the primary residence and the manufactured dwelling which will be removed. And as you've already seen the response from a neighbor. That's everything, thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions, discussion, motion? Excuse me, I'll move that uh, MPC approve DP 2019-004 uh, with the uh, conditions noted in Appendix A. Okay, any discussion on the motion? All in favor? That's carried. Okay, we'll move on to file number DP 2019-007. Uh, for Gleeson area parks and playground area. Within the hamlet of Gleeson and the recommendation is that MPC choose option one to approve the DP 2019-007 for a parks and playground area subject to conditions noted in Appendix A of the report. So 
So Wheatland County removed six pieces of playground equipment which were located on various areas of the subject parcel due to safety concerns and because the age of the equipment was past its life cycle. I'm just going to bring this here. Um, the county is now proposing that new CSA approved structures and equipment be erected and grouped together on one area of the property. An RFP is currently underway, so the exact equipment which will be purchased will depend on the proposals received and the budget which has been allocated for the project. Parks and playgrounds are a discretionary use in the PR district. MPC is the development authority for decisions on discretionary uses. So this is located outside of the CMRB area. The MDP does have a few um, policies about proposed, it says, in section 3.10.1 that parks and recreation objectives which states that the county encourages high quality recreational facilities that meet the needs of all residents across all age economic and cultural backgrounds the parks and rec policy 3.10.2 states the county shall continually explore the acquisition and reuse of land for new parks and recreation facilities the proposal has a land use designation of pr and it meets all the requirements of the LUB for this district. The intent of this district is to provide for open spaces and recreational uses within the county. So staff are proposing the following three options for MPC to consider. Option one, that MPC approve DP 2019-007 for a parks and playground area subject to conditions in Appendix A of the development permit report because that with the stated conditions of approval the development authority has determined that the proposed parks and playground area complies with the county's land use bylaw rules and regulations option two is to refuse the application with reasons and option three is to provide an alternative recommendation of mpc's choosing the so staff are recommending option one the proposal does align with the mdp the proposal aligns with the intents and purposes of the parks and rec district and the proposed playground fits with the context of the area, which is primarily residential in nature. So proposed conditions are this development permit is issued solely for the purpose of a playground defined as parks and playgrounds. No variances have been granted. Development shall proceed according to parks and rec district requirements. No permanent development shall occur on or over any utility right of way or easement. So there's the location within the hamlet of Gleeson. There's an aerial photo. This is where the equipment is proposed to go. Outside of the CMRB area, it was circulated to all these residents within the hamlet. Aerial photo, that's a site photo. And that's examples of what they would like to put in there. That's everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion? Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? Yeah. <laughs> Not picking, just asking. I'll move that MPC approve development permit 2019 007 for a parks and playground area subject to conditions noted in Appendix A of the development permit report. Thank you, Amber. Any discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Any other matters we need to discuss? If not, we'll take it on. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Jason, all in favor? That's it.